Welcome to this tutorial for Connected Sheets. For those who aren't familiar, Connected Sheets' goal is to combine the power and scale of BigQuery with the simplicity of a spreadsheet. To get started, open up a new Sheets file, go to the Data menu, and at the bottom you'll see Data Connectors with the option to connect to BigQuery. Once you do that, you'll be asked to choose a BigQuery project. I can search for my projects here, and I can select it. And then I see data sets that are available to me. So here we see both private data sets that are specific to this cloud project. We also see public data sets that are available for anyone to analyze. If I choose public data sets, I see some interesting data sets for analysis. We see things like uh, bike share programs, crime, baseball stats, all kinds of good things here. Now the Sheets team is actually based in New York City. And so if I scroll down, I see some New York data sets. There's one here called New York 311. And what this is, is if you're in New York and you dial 311 on your phone, you actually can make requests to the New York City government to fix things. So here I see a table that contains this data of these requests. And if I click on Connect, it'll now make a connection between Sheets and the full data set um, for these 311 requests. Now you'll notice, I didn't write any SQL. All I did was choose that table and then make a connection to the full data set. So here we see it's, it's successfully connected. Um, we see there's 22 million rows of data in this data set. And so let's start analyzing. Now the first thing I see is a preview of the data. So I see uh, all the columns in my data set. I can scroll over and see all of them here. And if I want, I can filter and sort this preview to, to again, explore my data and understand more about what's in these tables. Now let's do some analysis using Sheets functions. Up here I see the function button, and in it I see all the functions that are available to me to use to analyze my data in BigQuery. I see things like average, average if, count, count if, count unique, min, max, um, sum if, etc. So I can click on one of these, or I can simply go to a new tab and I can start writing a formula. So let's do that. If I jump over to sheet one here, I see some prompts. Um, and so the first one is asking me for the number of distinct agencies in my data set. So that's pretty easy if I use a count unique function. So let's do that. So if I write equals count unique, I can see it here in autocomplete. I'll tab over. I can then start typing the name of the table. So it's 311 service requests. And I see the first option here is agency. So I'll just tab to complete it, close out the parenthesis, and it says it's ready to apply changes. So when I hit this, it's going to run this against the full data set in BigQuery comes back with 31. So there's 31 distinct agencies in my 22 million rows of data. Now it's asking for the number of requests, 311 service requests, by agency. So in this case here, we want some conditional uh, formulas that will take into account uh, the values in A4 and A5. So let's just do a count if for that. So I'll start writing count if. Again, I'll start typing the name of my table. And we'll say if the agency is equal to, in this case, A4. So I'll close that, and I can hit Apply Changes. And so I see there's about 5 million or so uh, requests for the NYPD. And since it's just a regular Sheets formula, I can copy it. And if I paste it down below, um, I can hit Apply Changes there as well. And now it'll use the value in A5. Uh, and it shows me that 3 million requests for the Department of Transportation. Now, let's do some analysis using Sheets Charts. To get started with charts, I'll click on the Charts button here, and let's insert a chart on a new sheet. So here I see my chart editor, and I can get started uh, building my chart. So first, I'd like to see how the number of requests vary based on area of New York City. So New York is divided into five neighborhoods called boroughs, so let's see how uh, the number of requests vary by borough. So on my right, I see uh, the various columns in my data set, and I should be able to drag them over uh, into the editor just to its left. So I'll stick with a column chart, although I have you know, all the Sheets charts available to me. Um, so let's keep a column chart, and let's drag over Burrow into my x-axis. And what I want to do is actually want to count up the number of distinct reports. So let's just copy over unique key into series, and let's change this to a count. And that looks good. 
So now I will hit apply, and it will now run uh, this chart setup against my data in BigQuery against all 22 million rows. And so we see the result back here. We see that there's approximately 6 million or so uh, requests coming from Brooklyn, followed by Queens, Manhattan, etc. So you can see it's pretty easy to create a chart. Again, no SQL required. Let's say instead of a, a column chart, I'd like to do uh, a, a time series chart that shows the number of requests uh, over time. So for that, let's go back to my, my preview here. I'll hit chart again. Um, let's insert another new sheet. And so now, instead of a column chart, let's change it to a line chart. For my x-axis, I'll drag over created date. And we'll see a new option here called group by. So actually, you can roll up dates into higher level units. So I have the option of rolling up by hour, by day of week, by month, et cetera. So let's do year and month to see how this grows over time. And again, I want to just do a count of unique keys. So let's just change again sum to count. That looks good. So let's hit apply. And so now I should get back a time series for how the number of requests varies over time. Now, let's do some analysis using pivot tables. To get started, let's click on the pivot table button here and insert it onto a new sheet. On the left here, we see our pivot table placeholder, and on the right, we see our pivot table editor. So what I'm interested in understanding is which complaints are most frequent. So to do that, I'm gonna drag this complaint type column into my rows, and then I'm gonna drag unique key down into values, and let's make this a count now, rather than viewing this as an alphabetically sorted list, let's instead sort it by the count of reports, and let's do it from biggest to smallest. Additionally, rather than showing absolute numbers, let's show it as a percentage of the column. So once that looks good to go, I can hit apply, and this should give me uh, the report that I'm looking for. And there we go. So now if I expand this, make it a little easier to read, I see that approximately 8% of our complaints were around noise, followed by hot water, and then street conditions. You can make many different kinds of pivot tables uh, using connected sheets. Here are a few other examples I've created. So let's say we want to do a breakout um, by borough and by complaint type. So here, I've added both borough and complaint type in my rows. But what I've done is I've limited my complaint type to the top five values. So what you see over here is by borough, I see the five um, highest complaints, um, and here are the percentages for each of those complaints. What we see here is for the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Manhattan, the most common complaint type is noise, whereas for Queens, the most common type uh, is blocked driveways, followed by um, Staten Island with street conditions. We also have this pivot table here, and what we've done here is we've actually used created date in two different ways. So for the rows, we've used created date and we're doing a group by hour. So you can see that here, that hour of the day. And then we've also added create, created date in columns, but then a group by day of week. And so we see those columns here. That way, these percentages represent the frequency of reports by hour of day and day of week. Now to make this a little easier to see, we actually can highlight these values here. And we can use regular sheets conditional formatting to make the values pop a bit. So let me go to color scale, and I'll make this such that the green represent higher values and white will represent lower values. And so what I see here now is that during the work week, Monday through Friday, most of the reports are coming in between 9 and 5, whereas on the weekends we see Saturday night into Sunday morning, um, there's also a spike probably due to noise, uh, noise complaints, and same thing with Friday into Saturday morning, we also see a spike again probably due to noise complaints. So that's how you can use connected sheets to create interesting pivot tables um, on your BigQuery data. So by default, the preview is for 500 rows of data in BigQuery. However, if you want to import more data, you can use the extract function. This allows you to import more of your data from BigQuery and pull it into Sheets. So if I click on Extract, I can put it on a new sheet. And so let's say I want to import um, created date and complaint type. I can select those columns. I can apply any other filters that I'd like. I can sort the data however I'd like, and I can say, Let me, give me 10,000 uh, rows of this data, and hit apply. And now it'll import the data from BigQuery and pull this into Sheets. Connected Sheets also allows you to create what are called calculated columns. These are new columns you can add that are transformations or combinations of other columns in the data set. To create them, they're pretty easy. You just right click on a column, 
and choose Add Calculated Column. And so for some examples, this question mark shows that you can do things like multiply uh, the price column times the quantity column, or if you have a text column, you can do text operations like grab the right four characters from that column, or you can use date operations, for example, to extract just the year from the start date. To learn the full set of operations you can use on calculated columns, you can click the Learn More link uh, to see some examples in the different function types. In this case here, uh, I'm interested in looking at uh, the close date and created date and understanding the number of days that have elapsed between them. So what I want to do is create a new column called number of days close and my formula is just going to be closed date minus created date. So if the formula validates correctly I see the green check mark and now if I hit add it'll add it to my preview here. So we hear, see here that it's updating and once it's ready to go, I can look over to the right and I see my new column. And it looks like it's showing me the number of days now between uh, the closed date and, cre and created date. I can now use this column uh, to do things like filtering and sorting, not only in the preview, but I can use this as well. Um, for example, in my pivot table here, if I want to add a filter, I can say just show me reports um, where the um, number of days to close, let's say, was greater than a week. So let's say uh, is greater than seven. And so now, if we rerun this, we'll get a pivot table back where it took longer than seven days to close those reports. So I see here that actually when it comes to uh, items that took longer than seven days to close, the number one complaint is actually plumbing. By default, all of the analysis you do in Connected Sheets uh, remains unchanged until you decide to change it. What that means is even if the data is changing in BigQuery, your charts, your pivot tables, and your formulas values will remain the same until you decide to refresh. Each item uh, provides the date that it was last updated and you are provided the option to hit the refresh button to update each item individually. Alternatively, you can go to the data menu, you can go to data connectors and choose to refresh the data. You can choose refresh all to make sure that they are all updated at the same time. You also can choose to schedule a refresh. By doing this, you can say that you want to update your report every day, every week, or every month. And you also can specify within that, you know, what time of day or what days of week uh, do you want to update it. This allows you to refresh uh, your report on a regular basis without you manually doing any refreshing yourself. For those who do know SQL, we have another option called Query Parameters. This allows you to create a query and have that query reference uh, data that lives in particular cells. For example, let's say I have this drop down here that shows different agencies in New York, the NYPD, Department of Transportation, etc. I can write a query that will then update depending on the value in that cell. To do this, let's edit my underlying query here. And so if I click on this icon here, I'll change connection settings. And under advanced options, I see a custom query. And we can see that really um, what we've been looking at is a simple select star from a particular table uh, query. Now let's make this a little more advanced by adding a where clause and say where uh, agency equals and I will apply a parameter. So let's add it and we'll call this parameter agency and we'll choose the cell where it lives. So if we go back to our sheet, it's C2. I'll hit OK and add. So now my results are going to be a, a select star from this table where my agency equals the value in C2. So now let's insert my results. I can uh, update all of these items using the refresh all option we talked about earlier. So if I go to data, data connectors, refresh data. I'll now hit refresh all to see all of my items update to reflect uh, the agency being the NYPD you'll see as things are updated, uh, all of my charts and pivot tables will now reflect that. And so if I were to change NYPD to let's say Department of Transportation, again I can hit refresh all and see how all of my charts and pivot tables will update again. The best way to reach us is to click the send feedback button at the top right of the preview page in Connected Sheets. You also can email us at connected-sheets dash support at google.com. 
We'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you think. Thanks.